Okay folks, let's play a game called How Dumb Does NASA Think You Really Are? Take a look at the title of this article. You hooked yet? You salivating? First paragraph, right off the bat. Lumping everyone together. You. Me. Anyone else who's worried about a solar event or a pole shift calling us doomsday theorists. In this entire article, the very premise of their debunking is that there's nothing in the fossil or geologic record to suggest that these events were ever harmful in the past. Well, I had no idea that cavemen purified water and pumped it through pipes and taps into their homes. I had no idea that dinosaurs relied on satellites to sustain their vast population as NASA recently claimed we so vitally do now. Come on, folks, there's nothing in the fossil or geologic record because we are unique in the history of this planet as being the only, the first species to be vulnerable to this type of event because of our reliance on these things. Our food is grown, transported, preserved, kept uh, from spoiling, heated, cooked, all through electricity. It's how the water gets here. It's how you don't freeze to death in the winter. And NASA will tell you that these things couldn't possibly be deadly. That having our magnetic shields go down couldn't possibly be deadly. That solar events couldn't be deadly. Just like in this article, killer solar flares are an impossibility. Remember this? They could have taught this to an elementary school student. Really all they were saying was that solar flares and coronal mass ejections aren't going to blow up the earth and they're not going to come and fry you. Really, that's the entire premise of the title of this article when they go right ahead and tell you that coronal mass ejections could blow out a power grid. Either a coronal mass ejection or a solar flare could render a satellite useless. Yes, those very same satellites we rely on. And like it or not, think it's crazy or not, you can't dismiss the statistical correlation between electromagnetic fluctuations, disturbances, and seismicity. Volcanoes, things like that. It is what it is. And folks, if you start really digging, we've only shown you a handful of their contradictions here. If you really start digging, please keep a garbage pan nearby. But even if you can ignore these contradictions, just take a look at some of their mistakes. Most relevantly to what we're talking about here, they expect our solar cycle to peak this round in May of 2013, a year and a half from now. And they think that the maximum sunspot number is going to be 90. That was affirmed, actually, at the beginning of November. Well, we trust the Australian government to give us our sunspot number, and we were 88 in October, and we're 96.7 now. A year and a half early, we can say that their projections are wrong. A year and a half, we still have for the sun to ramp up. Dear NASA, why are you trying to get us to close our eyes? We have laid our dreams underneath your feet. Tread softly. You are treading on our dreams. We're watching you very closely. Be safe, everyone.